which is in the eastern part of Texas, about 80 miles southeast of Dallas. And when I was five, um, my family moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota, which uh, was a very, very cool place to grow up. And um, I started playing the trumpet when I was in the fourth grade, or second half of fourth grade. <laughs> There's never been a moment where I did not know that music was a part of my life. You know, like I grew up in a small town in Virginia, a small country town, and it was real, you know, real homey. Everybody knew everybody. It was really tight knit, and um, there definitely was a big advantage because that whole support factor was authentic. It was that whole thing of. You know, yeah, baby, keep on playing, and, and especially being um, exposed to the church dynamic of it. You know, my grandmother was always volunteering my services, and everybody was always encouraging me. Oh yeah, let her play, let her sing, let her do. You know, and um, you know, it, that was a really big thing, and it helped really ground an individual, especially as a child, anyway, where you're learning all those skills and you're and you're learning to feel comfortable in something. Music is a part of who I am. You know, and then I tell people, you know, the trumpet, it, it made my life make sense. You know, when I, when I started playing trumpet when I was about nine years old. Doodling around, baby, doodling around. Um, I'm sure I've gotten things because I'm female, and I'm sure I've not gotten things because I'm female. Um, you know, I think we all get things and don't get things for for one reason or another. Um, our gender, our color. Uh, it's, it's just the way that life works, unfortunately. Uh, or fortunately, I mean, if you get something, great, because because of what you happen to be, what you happen to look like, what gender you happen to be, or whatever, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> I've had a great career, and I've had some absolutely amazing opportunities. I heard this conversation going on, and um, I don't know, I just always wanted to do something like this because I thought it would just be so outrageous, so I go up to the guy, and uh, and I said, may I? And I, you know, I, I held my hand out for his trumpet, I said, may I? And he looked at me really weird, and he sort of handed me the trumpet, and I said, say Thomas, right? And the guy on the keyboard said, yeah. 
I said, okay, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Ba -da -ba -ba -da 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 -da. And those guys <laughs> freaked out so bad. It was hysterical. And uh, the guy playing the keyboard, once, so we played about three courses. We played the head, blew on a chorus, and then played the head out and ended. And it was, when it was over, the keyboard player was laughing so hard. The trumpet player, I think, he didn't know what to think. He just stood there, kind of, uh, didn't say a word, kind of looked at me like I was an alien. The keyboard player, he looked up and around, and he said, there's cameras, right? We're on some show, right? There's cameras, right? I said, no, there's no cameras. And he looked up and he said, God, did you send her? <laughs> Being a musician, you know, if you talk to anybody, they tell you, you know, you want to you wanna learn discipline, you know, you get around a musician. And I mean, that can go for anybody who, who is doing something of substance. Hi. But, um, you know, oh, being a musician, I, I like to think that I had a pretty good, you know, routine. But becoming a mother just fortified that and definitely intensified that. And it makes me definitely, definitely conscious that every single second is so valuable, you know? I want her to understand that she can explore creativity and I want her to understand that I'm a part of her, which means that what's important to me is important to her, what's important to her is important to me. So she's very much a part of my music, she's very much a part of my daily routine, in the womb, I was playing, so I'll, I'll wake up and I'll, I'll do my, my long tones. Most of the time, while she's sleeping, and I have my mutes, and I'll do that type of stuff. But she's learned to kind of be accustomed to it, so if she hears me playing, she's not startled, you know? And, you know, I'll wake up, get her together, breakfast, and, you know, I'll practice for maybe an hour or so, and kind of incorporate that in playtime. Nursery rhymes and you know little children's songs have become a huge part of my practice routine And that's not necessarily a bad thing <laughs> You know and different little folk songs that I, that I wanted to do lots of singing and that helps me You know because as a musician you have to learn how to get the most out of whatever you're doing I learned that a long time ago, man If I can just do long tones I got to figure out how to get articulation out of it how to get tone how to get breathing You know all the aspects you know, into one. So, you know, I've learned how to get a solid practice routine out of Mary Had a Little Lamb and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you know? <laughs> That's uh, life in my house. A singing dog. <laughs> you gonna sing again? Right, Rubes?